Hi guys, today we're going to show you how to set up your studio monitors and place them in your studio in the best possible way. We also tell you what to look for when buying your studio monitors and how you can improve the sound. For the most part, the speakers used in music production are different from the ones used for pleasure listening. Studio monitors have certain characteristics that differ from their hi-fi counterparts. First and foremost, nearly all modern studio monitors are active speakers with built-in amplifiers. Most hi-fi speakers are passive and must be connected to an external amplifier. The requirements for studio monitors are different from hi-fi speakers. In the studio, a linear response and wide frequency range are essential for assessing problems in recordings and mixes. They are meant for listening work rather than enjoyment. And conversely, the speakers used for hi-fi listening are mainly supposed to sound good, while many hi-fi speakers deliberately exaggerate the low frequency range but fail to accurately reproduce the very low sub-bass range. Others have a strong treble range but neglect the airy frequencies just below 20 kHz. This being said, a completely linear response and accurate impulse reproduction can cause listening fatigue during long sessions. This is why the sharpness band is slightly rolled off even in many studio monitors. The placement and orientation of studio monitors depends on the circumstances and the room. But there are a few simple rules. Firstly, follow the recommendations of the manufacturer to adjust the speaker settings. For example, speakers might feature filters for use on a desktop or close to a wall. The most common way to set up studio monitors is the so-called stereo triangle, just like we use in this room. In this arrangement, the two loudspeakers and the listening position form an isoclast triangle. That means that the distance between the two monitors has to be exactly the same as each distance between each monitor and the listening position. It is important to choose monitors that suit the room and speaker arrangement. Near-field monitors should not be placed too far from the listening position. Conversely, mid-field and far-field monitors are optimized for longer distances and placing them too close to the listening position doesn't make much sense. Loudspeakers are among the most important tools in the studio, so they are not something you'd want to compromise on. Furthermore, it always takes a while to get used to new speakers and get to know them. Frequently changing or upgrading monitors isn't ideal. It's much better to make a single investment in high quality speakers. Monitors should offer high power reserves and a wide frequency response. Other criteria are impulse fidelity, stereo imaging, a tight bass response and high detail. But without good room acoustics, even the best studio monitor cannot live up to its full potential. Uncontrolled early reflections can cause comb filtering effects, which can severely impair the listening experience. Avoid this by installing one of our sets for the acoustic treatment of your room. For example, in this room, we installed bass traps in the corners, absorbers on the walls, diffusers on the ceilings, and we even put some acoustic walls in front of the windows. If you want to optimize the room acoustics, check out our video on how to find the right acoustic set for you. Every room and every monitoring situation is different. To place your speakers optimally, you need the freedom that a speaker stand brings. Only with the help of one, you can control the position in the room, the optimal distance to the listener, the right height to the ear, and the distance to the floor and the ceiling. If your speakers are not decoupled from the support, it will have a detrimental effect on the sound. The goal of decoupling is to prevent speaker vibrations from transferring to the speaker stand or floor when playing music. To make the decoupling of the monitors even better, we recommend our isopads at this point. These are simply placed under the speaker and provide extra decoupling. They are available in all conventional sizes. Alright guys, that's it. I hope you learned something new today. Definitely go check out the video I mentioned. And if you've got any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.